Hey everyone, this is Grant from Spectre Racing, and this is what to bring to autocross and how to prepare your car. So how to prepare your car. Well, first thing, you want to make sure your car is in good working order. I'm not really going to go too much into depth into that, but pretty much just make sure it's running good, no leaks, uh, make sure your battery is tied down good, just pop the hood. If you got a battery strap, just tighten it up a bit. Um, just check your wheels for any wiggle or anything, um, but that's really about it. So next thing, some minor uh, tips for inside the car is uh, if you have a key, take it off the keychain because when you're out there racing, you don't want the uh, little key bobber bouncing around at your knee here and hitting you. It's just distracting. You're also going to want to take out any loose fitting items in the car. You don't want anything jostling around when you're out there on the track. So take everything out of the glove box except for maybe paperwork or whatever. Uh, you know, radar detector, any of that kind of stuff, they'll probably make you take it out anyway. And, uh, I think you're allowed, uh, floor mats now with the new rules, as long as they're held down by the little clips. But honestly, I just take them out anyway. Alright, so some basic things you'll need to bring out to your first autocross event. Now, keep in mind this is geared towards, uh, just your average sports car or whatnot. Uh, if you need any specialized tools or anything for your car, you're going to want to bring those, obviously. So the first and most important thing, a bit funny, but you don't want to bring sunscreen. A couple times I forgot sunscreen, I hate my life for the next few days. Usually autocross is in parking lot or an airport runway or a racetrack, and there's no shade anywhere. You don't want to bring some sunscreen. And they usually don't have any. At the, the Most clubs don't usually bring extra sunscreen. You might be able to bum it off somebody else, but probably the most important thing. So next up is tire pressure gauge and some chalk. Now I go over this in another one of my videos, I'm going to link below, but if this is your first time out there and you you know just want to have fun, you probably don't need to fiddle with this too much, but if you want to try and dial in your tires and everything, definitely recommend getting a good tire pressure gauge. Don't use the little stick ones. You want the little tire pressure gauge with the, the elongated uh, thing here, so that way you're not sitting right in front of your tire, which can be dangerous if it explodes or something. And this is the Joe's Racing one. You can get off Amazon for about 20 bucks. I'll link it below. And then the chalk. The chalk is to help you uh, dial in your tire pressure. Like I said, uh, watch the video below on how to do that. Uh, this is just kids chalk from Kmart. Now to add to the tire pressure gauge, you probably need a tire inflator. Uh, you don't really need to get anything too fancy. You probably have one in your car. If you're uh, if you like my Miata and it has uh, the uh, tire repair kit because they're too cheap to include a spare tire. But uh, this is just a standard slime tire pressure inflator from Walmart for about 20 bucks. Works fine. So next up, uh, usually I'll cross, depending on where you, what kind of event you go to, uh, there's not going to be anywhere to eat or drink anything, so you're going to want to bring a lot of water and lunch. I recommend bringing a cooler or something uh, if you got the space in your car. If not, just bring a little lunchbox. With, uh, I usually never bring enough water, but at least at least a gallon of water, I'd say. Um, and a lunch, packed lunch somehow, peanut butter and jelly or whatever. Okay, so next up, a bit more fun, is you want to bring a camera. If you got a GoPro, definitely want to bring a GoPro. Uh, great cameras. I'll make some videos below, and I'll link them below once I make them, uh, on how to make great autocross videos and how to get the sound good and everything so you don't hear just endless wind noise. But you don't want some kind of mount. If you don't have a GoPro, you can use a cell phone mount. This is my old iPhone mount, actually. Um, but the you want a real solid mount because you don't want your phone flying out of the window or anything. And these work pretty good. I've never had one of them fall off. You just want to make sure you clean the car a little bit and to get all the dust off so they don't fall off mid-track. So next up, uh, this isn't 100% required, but it's just easier because you don't have to go hunting down uh, any of the officials or bumming off tape off somebody's some blue tape. If you don't have letters for your car, as you see in my car, I have uh, the permanent, semi-permanent vinyl ones now because this is a dedicated race car. But uh, some blue tape 
it uh it won't it, as long as you don't leave it on for more than a few days it uh it won't leave any kind of residue or anything and uh won't harm your paint um now if you do want to get more into the sport i recommend and your car is not a dedicated race car i recommend getting the magnetic letters this is my old t when i used to run tsm these just stick on the only thing you want to make sure the surface is clean because you don't want to put it on your car and your car is kind of covered in dust or sand or whatever and it can kind of grind your paint but just make sure the surface is clean stick it on there make sure it looks good because uh someone takes a photo and your tea's all wonky it looks ridiculous but these usually run about six to eight dollars per letter so it is a bit pricey i think i paid like 50 or 60 bucks for both sides letters and numbers because you'll need them and then depending on the size of your car you want uh different size letters like these are 10 inches because the uh, the Mustang's a fairly large car, but if you got like a a Yaris or something tiny, you probably want to get like six six inches or eight inches. Uh, next up, it kind of tags along the uh, the sunscreen and umbrella. Now it seems kind of weird bringing an umbrella, but uh, obviously if it rains, you'll need it. But another thing, if you work when you run autocross, you usually have to work one heat and you run another heat. So if you're out there chasing cones and you have some downtime between cars flying off the road or whatever, you're going to want an umbrella because you're just going to be sitting there baking in the sun. Now make sure it's not red because uh, that can be mistaken for a red flag. But I know it's not the manliest thing in the world to have an umbrella, but after a while of doing this, it, it's just a lot more comfortable not having the sun beat down on you for, for an hour and a half when you're out there chasing cones. Now another thing, if you have a helmet for some reason, for you do drag racing or whatever, uh, I would go ahead and bring it. Make sure it is a Snell helmet within the 10 year lifespan or whatever. So it's Snell 2010 I think is what mine is, so it's good for 10 years from then. Um, you can't use a motorcycle helmet. Uh, and they will check this. Now they will have spare helmets there, so it's not a requirement. But uh, it is nice having your own helmet because the spare helmets the clubs will usually have have never been washed and pretty grungy. Now, if you don't want to go spend that, that was the Simpson FR Cruiser helmet new. It's two hundred fifty bucks, which is a pretty good deal. It's an open face helmet. Um, if you don't want to go spend that money and you're worried about putting grungy helmets on your head, you can buy a head sock. You get them on Amazon for about eight bucks. Uh, you look a little silly wearing a head sock because it looks like you're all, you know, fire suited up and everything. But it'll stop, uh, give you a little barrier between you and the grungy old helmet that you'll be borrowing. Now, another thing I recommend is getting a driving shoe. Now, you don't actually have to go out and buy a driving shoe because they can be a bit pricey. If you have a pair of running shoes or just any kind of shoe with a really thin insole, I'd recommend using those. You get a lot better pedal feel and pedal control with the thin insole. I'd bring these as a spare pair because uh, when you're out there chasing cones, you don't want to stand on these for an hour because they have a thin insole and they're not very comfortable. So I'd wear like a some kind of comfortable uh, working shoe for uh, for your working heat and then bring your driving slash running shoe out for when you actually run your car. And the last thing I recommend you bring is a Rubbermaid container if you have big enough space in your car or just put it in your passenger seat is a Rubbermaid container with a top. And what you can do is, when you pull all this stuff out of your car, all the loose items, or all this junk that you're going to bring, um, you want to put it there, in your car, or in the in their container. That way, if it rains, or um, anything else, you know, it's windy or whatever, you can put all the stuff in there, and it's secure. And it's it's out of your car, so if it's raining, you know, you don't have to worry about your floor mats and everything getting wet while you're out running. All right, well, that's about it. Um, some other minor things you might want to consider bringing are uh, like a external battery pack for your cell phone or at least a, uh, a cell phone car charger because I found, you know, if you're taking pictures or taking some videos and stuff, you're going to burn through your battery pretty quickly. Uh, another thing, um, you know, some, some tailgating chairs. Or even if you can fit a tailgating tent, it's really nice to have that. Uh, 
not like I said, not necessary. You can bum someone else's or just uh, sit in your car or go hang out. But uh, some other nice things to have. But let me know if you have any suggestions or tips or if I forgot something uh, below in the comments. But thanks for watching.